we decided to quit our jobs. It's a great place for picking up any kind of vintage parts that you may need. And these I sewed myself. The story is still writing itself. Hi, I'm Candace. And I'm Justin. And this is our Airstream Olive. This is our dining area and we have another leaf and this table can come out to about here. We've had up to 10 people in here. It works really well, but for the two of us, we typically keep it like this, which is perfect. And then we have a little bit more room here. This is where Sato sleeps. You'll meet him in a bit. This will pull out and make a twin. This is also another twin. Down here, we have lots and lots of storage. We also have more storage up here. Not very tidy, but it works. And I love plants. And in order for me to live in this 20 foot vessel for the next year or more, I had to fill it with plants to make it feel homey and cozy. Filled it with pillows, which also makes it cozier. And I did all the interior paint. Justin did the flooring. When we picked her up, she didn't have any window coverings at all. And I love all the light that the windows bring in, but we had to have some window coverings for privacy. So I wanted to do something simple and natural. I got just wood dowels from Home Depot and I ordered some leather on Etsy. And these I sewed myself with some blackout so that we're able to sleep in. Lighting is one of the things that we actually liked. And so we kept the lighting that was in that the previous owner put in. The cushions were also something that we liked. So we kept those and just added all the throw pillows for some color. This heater, we believe, is actually original to Olive. It's one of the few things we have not swapped out, and <clears throat> we needed it for the first two weeks of this trip, and it worked fabulous. It works off of propane, um, and it kept us really warm when we got caught in a snowstorm a couple weeks ago. This is the couch that also doubles as a bed. Every night, we pull this out, and this is where we sleep. And then the morning we put it back together because we really enjoy the tidiness of having a couch and the larger walkway to get to the restroom and also to get into our kitchen. Side note about the curtains and the curvature of the wall. When I made these curtains, I had to sew in magnets and then we glued magnets to the side here so it fits really tight at night and it doesn't allow any light in. I grew up camping and I hadn't camped as an adult and I read this Sunset Magazine article about this woman that had a teardrop and she camped with her dogs. After reading that, I decided that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna buy a teardrop and I'm going to camp with my dog. And then I met Justin and I pitched the idea to him because he's a photographer and he loved it. So we got our first teardrop, which was 10 feet long. And yeah, we started in that and we had the teardrop for a couple of years and then moved up to a bigger camper that was only 13 feet. And uh, that really expanded our love for just being outdoors. And, and, and with my photography, I was looking for opportunities to just see more of, the, uh, see more of California, see more of the US and, and have some great photography opportunities. After two years of uh, camping, we decided to quit our jobs and buy a bigger camper with a bathroom and take off for a year and see all of the US, which is what we're now doing. And we're on week six. One of our dreams and goal is to move to Europe. And in Europe, we spent a little bit of time there. We've been to Italy together. We've been to Portugal which is actually where we're looking to end up, is in Portugal. And everything's small there. The homes are small, the bathrooms are small, the kitchens are small. And we figured why not stick with that theme, live in a small or tiny home. Um, our tiny home is 20 feet and we've been in it for 35 days now. Uh, and we plan to be in, uh, we plan to be camping in this Airstream or in Olive for nine months or possibly longer. If we really fall in love with it, we might we might stick it out and do, do some more traveling in the camper before we go to Europe. But 
we figured this would be a good place to start to get us ready for living a smaller uh, footprint, a tinier lifestyle. This oven range is new. We don't use the oven very often, but we do use the stovetop all the time, daily. We really liked the countertops that, that the last owner put in, so we kept those. We sanded them down. Uh, we put in a new sink and faucet. We hung these racks, uh, which are super helpful for utensils. We have what we think is a fairly big fridge for, for this unit. And we typically shop for about three days. That's all we can really fit in here. So every three days we plan out our menu and we shop for the next three days. We've got some spices here and our cups that we use daily. We typically keep some citrus in here. We couldn't go a year without TV, unfortunately. So we put in this small TV and we have cable, which we use every now and again. And the story with this, this bunky um, photo is in my home, I had this wallpaper in my bathroom and it's called Drunk Monkeys. It's monkeys that are smoking and drinking. And I wanted, I loved it because I love monkeys. So I wanted to take some of that with us. So I had it put into a frame so we could take the monkeys on the road. The uh, 65 Airstreams did not have a fan and I knew we would be cooking a lot in here. So Eric, our wonderful mechanic, found a fan that would fit, which we use when we're cooking. And then the storage up here houses all of our food. This is our tiny but very efficient bathroom. Got a nice big window here that opens out to let in air. We have put in a compostable toilet, which works really well. And then we've each got a closet here for our clothing. Shower head here. Usually we'll shower at the campground, but every now and again in a pinch, this comes in very handy. And we've got the drain right here under the teak. And then because it's so white and sterile, I painted this wall and added the dandelion just for something fun. Again, more plants. We love having these closets, but they aren't real big. So we added some baskets up here where we keep uh, essentials that we don't use all the time, but we will need throughout the year. And then we've got some storage under here where we keep extra toiletries, some extra towels, cleaning supplies. Every now and again, you need some privacy. So we did put this door in. To begin this journey, uh, to embark on this journey, a, a big part of it was uh, putting ourselves on a, on a forced sabbatical. The jobs that we had didn't really allow us to uh, just pick up and go or work from the road. So we decided that we would take some time off and Candace sold her house. We, we moved into a, into a small place that was only 450 square feet, which was, which was a nice transition moving from a, a, big, a big home to a small, um, a small living space to then into our, our trailer. We sold uh, almost all of our belongings. Sold our bikes, our uh, workout equipment. We sold everything. Gave and away a lot of our clothing to prepare for this. So right now we're not working, but uh, we are looking for some alternative ways to bring in an income while we're on the road. And uh, the story is still developing. The story is still writing itself. So at some point we'll figure out what, what that income might be and we may just wait until we finish this uh, tour of the United States and then figure out what we want to do next. I think one of the coolest things about living on the road is we can go anywhere we want. Uh, we have a structured plan to get us across the country and back, but every, any plan can be canceled. Any, anything that we have already scheduled, we can easily cancel and pivot and, and go in a different direction. The same for me, really, it's the freedom. Uh, with my career, it was extremely structured. Every day I worked uh, by appointment, and I could tell you three weeks from now what I was doing at two o'clock. I love the freedom of being able to get up whenever I want and <clears throat> start my day, hike, relax, read a book if I want, 
It's very, very unstructured, and for me right now, it's that's perfect. So the, when we got her, there was a lot of things that needed to be done. One of the first things here, the windows leaked, so we redid all of the, the gaskets here. It came with the original windows from 1965. You could see there's still a little rust, and, and these latches, uh, a few of them we had to replace. We went through vintage trailer supply uh, to find those. It's a great place for picking up any kind of vintage parts that you may need for a rig like this, you know, from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And then here we have compartments for the refrigerator. Uh, we have electrical outside, which is great, all GFCI. Uh, there's even another one up here. So when we want to put our string, our lights up, uh, we can plug it in multiple different places. So in here we have our tankless water heater, the original water heater in here, when we brought her home, it busted and leaked everywhere. So our, our mechanic, Eric, he suggested this water heater. It costs about $500, it's tankless. And when you're plugged into shore power and the water, it, it runs perfectly. Perfect hot water running all the time. Heats up, quick. Heats up quickly when we're off grid and we, when we need to run our pump, uh, it, it, it's kind of intermittent. So, you know, we just deal with it when we're on the road. So you can see that Olive still has a pretty good shine. We, she was polished a couple of months ago and we just washed her about three days ago. So just to keep the shine and keep the, the dust and the grime off, the shine will, will stick around for a while, but the more that gets on there, then the, the shine will end up dulling over time. We even had a custom tire cover made with her name and our Instagram on there. So up top we have brand new air conditioning, which will, which one's great when we're on shore power. Off grid, we can run it for about an hour before the batteries will run out. Uh, so we, we stick to the fan when we're off grid. In here we've got storage in the bumper uh, where we put all of our sewer equipment, which we'll, you'll see around this side. Uh, plenty of windows great for just letting the sunshine come in you know we love being in the sun and being warm this compartment houses all of our uh, electrical and and in cable we have a cable wire in there and our electrical will come out about a 30 foot cord there our water water is here uh, this is the the vent for our heater which which we which runs on propane We've been using it a lot on this trip and it works amazing, heats it up pretty quickly inside. Okay, here in the front, we have our, our water uh, inlet. We have a 30 gallon water tank that we also put in there, uh, brand new. Two four and a half gallon propane tanks. This propane tank, when it's not cold and we're not running a lot of uh, power off the, uh, air con or the, the heater, when we're not running the heater, these will last a month a piece so it's great we had a new rock guard fabricated our our mechanic eric uh, from eric's automotive and fabricating he's in martinez if you guys are in the bay area he's absolutely fantastic and will help with any kind super knowledgeable about uh, just camping in general uh, so he put this built this for us we got this plexiglass uh, so we could see through all the way through the back. The original one on here was broken and it was frosted so you couldn't see through. So this is super helpful when we're on the road to be able to see traffic behind us. I would say just do it. We live once, live your life, the rest will fall into place. If you have a dream like this, go for it. And on the, on the planning side, you know, there's a little bit of planning that goes into this. And I would just say, do your due diligence. Uh, there's plenty, a plethora of information on the internet, on uh, the camping lifestyle, what you need, how to get started. We follow a lot of blogs and podcasts. And e even with that, we still, we still have hurdles to, to overcome. We still make mistakes, uh, but it's always nice to have a little bit of preparation. But the other cool thing is just going out and, and winging it and just learning things on the fly. And usually when you make your own mistakes, that's how you, uh, that's how you grow and that's how you learn. And, and we're, we're certainly going through that process on this trip. If you'd like <laughs> to follow our journey, 
You can find us at tinytrailertrips.com. We have a blog and an Instagram and a TikTok. And the Instagram and the TikTok are the same name, Tiny Trailer Trips. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.